we are exploring uh, evidence from church fathers regarding the long ending of the Gospel of Mark. Uh, if you haven't seen our previous video, we invite you to go to our playlist and look at uh, what are the best English translation of the Bible and you will see the previous series we have already um, released. And today we are continuing on our church fathers uh, and today we're going to talk about another church father after talking about uh, Ambrose, uh, Frantatanius, uh, Didymus the Blind, Saint Jerome, uh, Eusebius, uh, etc., uh, Irenaeus from the second century. We're going to talk about an Eastern church father from Syria who is well known especially in the Orthodox Church and who has provided some evidence that verse 9 to 20 was part of the Gospel of Mark. Let's take a look at it. Uh, we have this church father theologian named Ephraim from Syria, Cyrus, uh, who lives around uh, 360 AD in the midst of the 4th century. He was a bishop of a city in Syria called Edessa. Not only wrote a Syria commentary on what we call Tatian Diatessaron. Tatian was a church father from the second century who wrote a harmony of the four gospel, um, which unfortunately is not available, but through their writing we're able to trace it back. Eusebius uh, in particular uh, provide uh, information about this diatess uh, tesseron. Uh, so Ephraim wrote before his death in 373 AD, but also he composed many hymns. In one of those hymns, Ephraim combined Mark 16, verse 15a and Matthew 28, verse 19b. Uh, we have talked about this reference previously. You can take a look at them. Giving the following sense. Go into all the world from the Gospel of Mark, Mark 15, and baptize in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Spirit. From Matthew. It's very common, Matthew 28, verse 19. So Ephraim clearly is affirming that verse 15 is part of the gospel and it's part of the original writing. Okay, so that's the first evidence for today. And then the second evidence is coming from someone called Epiphanianus of Salamis. He's from uh, the present day island of uh, uh, Cyprus and he was born in Judea around 315 AD and he began his career as a bishop in 376 AD. Again, literally 20 to 30 years after Codex Vaticanus and Codex Sinaiticus which only have the short ending of the Gospel of Mark. And after busy career, which include visit to Egypt, Antioch, Rome, and Constantinople, which is present-day Turkey in Istanbul, in 386, in volume 41 of Migne Patrologica Graecia, in which Epiphanius addressed a heretics. Okay, there was a lot of heretics around that time. And Epiphanius quoted March 16, verse 19. And here is what he said, quote, the sacred body itself is on high with the Godhead. Altogether God, one Son, the Holy One of God, seated at the Father's right hand. As the Gospel of Mark, so he's quoting the Gospel of Mark, and the other evangelists put it, and he ascended up to heaven. And this is precisely the last verse of the Gospel of Mark. Okay? Uh, and sat on the right hand of the Father. So quoting clearly Mark 16 verse 19 and 20. So another theologian, church father, who was also aware of the Greek manuscript of the Gospel of Mark with a long ending. And your trashy account, talking to the heretic, and the account of your dupe will prove altogether worse less. So two more church fathers with 
evidence about the existence of the long ending of the Gospel of Mark. Now let's look at the great theologian from the 5th century, St. Augustine um, from Ipo, North Africa. In his Harmony of the Gospel, you remember, we have seen also previous church fathers trying to harmonize the go four gospel. Uh, you remember Eusebius, Marinus was a Christian who wrote a letter around 325 AD to Eusebius to clarify why this apparent contradiction between Mark chapter 16 verse, um, uh, verse uh, 9 and uh, Matthew 28 verse 2. So Augustine is also wrestling with a similar issue when harmonizing the gospel. Okay and let's see what uh, Augustine is saying. He quoted all of Mark 16 verse 9 to 20 in his uh, um, uh, book Bits by Big in the course of this discussion of the discrepancy between the Gospels account, in particular here between Matthew 28 and Mark 16. In chapter 25 of his book, Augustine focused upon the post-resurrection appearance of Christ. And he's quoting Mark 16 verse 9 to 20. And of course, the, uh, the, the account given by Luke of the two travelers on the road to Emmaus, whom Jesus Christ met and is telling them how foolish they are because they should have known that the Messiah, the Christ, was not going to remain on the tomb. He was to rise on the third day according to the scripture. He's taking them back to the scripture to remind them this is what was going to happen. How fool are you not to realize it? Thinking that when Christ died, that was the end of it. Okay. Another attestation. Now let's look at one last Codex here called the Codex Washingtonianus. Okay, and this Codex Washingtonianus contains the writing of the long ending of the Gospel of Mark, verse 9 to 20. Okay, let's read it. This Codex was written codex called Codex W, is a manuscript which was discovered in Egypt in 1906 in the 20th century, but it is dated around 400 AD, so around the time of Codex Sinaiticus and Codex Vaticanus, which have the short ending of the Gospel of Mark. Okay, now Codex W is a very interesting manuscript of the Gospel, not only because it contains, remember we talked about the Freer Logion, this is an interpolation which speak about a dialogue, a brief dialogue between the risen Jesus Christ and his disciple. And it was inserted between verse 14 and verse 15 of the Gospel of Mark chapter 16. So the free legion, which tells you these um, additional verses from the Gospel of Mark 9 to 20 were part of the original writing. Because all these documents, all these manuscripts contain those specific verses. And we remind you in the beginning of this question that we're dealing with, we have over 1600 Greek manuscripts, even though they were dated from later than Codex Vaticanus and Codex Sinaiticus, it doesn't mean they were not uh, uh, consistent with the original writing of the Gospel of Mark. Okay, they are consistent because many church fathers are providing evidence that they did, they indeed were part of the Gospel of Mark. Okay, the post resurrection appearance of Jesus Christ were part of the post resurrection, part of the Gospel of Mark. Okay, now, uh, so not only it contained the free legion, okay which give reference to verse 14 and 15, okay? But also, its text seems to have been pieces together from the remain of a sortic exemplar, each of which descended, so to speak, from a different group of textual ancestors. So basically, this is a mixed manuscript which combines different traditions, but it contains Mark 16, verse 9 to 20, which is the point we're trying to make. And 
further attestation that verse 9 to 20 were not added later on. They were part of the original writing of the Gospel of Mark. May God bless you. Thank you for your attention and stay tuned.